Several breaking headlines tonight amid concerns over the coronavirus. The president suspending travel from Europe for 30 days beginning on Friday. There is also now an economic push following today's drop in the stock market. Meanwhile, a ripple effect in the entertainment industry tonight. Tonight's announcement on Twitter from one actor and what several television studios are now saying about major shows and their audiences. And within the last hour, we are now learning the NBA is being impacted after a player tested positive for COVID-19. The COVID-19 positive test came to light just before tonight's game between the Utah Jazz and the Oklahoma City Thunder in Oklahoma City, forcing NBA officials to cancel the game, sending fans home and players to their locker rooms, where at this hour they remain under quarantine. With more on this bizarre development tonight, let's head into the newsroom with our Greg Simmons. We are definitely in uncharted territory now. The player in question is the Jazz All-Star Rudy Gorbert, who is not with the Jazz in Oklahoma City tonight when the news broke. This was the scene of the Chesapeake Energy Arena tonight when NBA officials conferred with the league office after getting the news of the positive test and then the announcement came from the public address announcer that the game had been canceled and asked fans to file out of the arena in an orderly manner. The positive test came today but after Gorbert held a press conference on Monday in which he touched every microphone and recorder on his way out. Up in Dallas, the Mavericks are hosting the Denver Nuggets tonight after Dallas lost to the Spurs last night. And the Silver and Black were scheduled to host the Nuggets on Friday until now. And this is how Mavs owner Mark Cuban got the word tonight during the game. You can see his reaction on the phone, and now you can hear it. This is crazy. This can't be true. I mean, it's not within the realm of possibilities. It's just to it seem more like out of a movie than reality. It's really not about basketball or money. I mean, literally, if, if this thing is just exploding to the point where, you know, all of a sudden players and others have had it, you think about your family, you know, you want to really make sure you're doing this the right way, you know, because now it, it's, it's much more personal. And you've seen what's happened in other countries, but just the whole idea that it's come this close and potentially a couple of players have it. Um, just stunning isn't the right word. All right, here is a league statement announcing the suspension of play following tonight's game. A player on the Utah Jazz is preliminary tested positive for COVID-19. The test result was reported shortly prior to tip-off tonight's game between the Jazz and the Oklahoma City Thunder at Chesapeake Energy Arena. At that time, tonight's game was canceled. The affected player was not in the arena. The NBA is suspending gameplay following the conclusion of tonight's schedule of games until further notice. The NBA will use this hiatus to determine the next steps for moving forward in regard regard to the coronavirus pandemic. Now, earlier today, the NCAA announced that March Madness will be played without fans in the stands, a first in the history of one of the country's most popular sporting events. The University of Texas announced tonight that all of their athletic events will still take place, but without any fans, a Big 12 tournament that tips off tomorrow in Kansas City, Missouri, says it will do so without fans. Conference USA that involves UTSA and the Southland Conference with UIW say they're limiting access to their conference basketball tournaments. And as far as we know, as of right now, the boys' high school state championship championship tournament scheduled to start tomorrow on the Alamo Dome is still on more on the historic day coming up in sports. Tim. Thank you, Greg. Another major headline. President Donald Trump announcing during an address to the nation tonight a travel ban for people coming to the U.S. All travel from Europe to the U.S. will be suspended for the next 30 days. That new rule goes into effect on midnight Friday. The Department of Homeland Security says Americans and lawful U.S. residents are exempt from that ban. The president also said he will not ban travel from the United Kingdom, where hundreds of cases have been confirmed. <laughs> president Trump also announcing he's taking emergency action to provide workers financial relief. He says he will instruct the, Secret the Treasury Department to defer tax payments without interest or payments for certain individuals and businesses who are negatively impacted. He's also calling on Congress to provide Americans with immediate payroll tax relief. This comes after stocks plummeted into bear market territory today. The White House also announced that President Trump is canceling planned events in Nevada and Colorado out of an abundance of caution because of the coronavirus outbreak. Also new tonight, this one catching a lot of people's attention. Actor Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita Wilson, announcing they have tested positive for coronavirus. He posted the update on social media while in Australia. Hank says the couple feels a bit tired with some body aches. They'll now have to wait in isolation. They say they plan to take the process one day at a time. On television, meanwhile, The Tonight Show and other late night talk shows in New York announcing they will tape without audiences.
And here at home, we are still waiting for the next group of Grand Princess cruise ship passengers to arrive at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland for quarantine. 98 passengers arrived by plane last night. All of them reported to be asymptomatic. Going forward, only Texas residents will be kept for the full length of their quarantine at JBSA Lackland. According to the Texas Department of State Health Services, there are 21 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Texas. Three cases in Collin County, two cases in Dallas County, six in Fort Bend County, seven cases in Harris County, and one case each in Gregg, Montgomery, and Tarrant Counties. Again, these numbers do not include the evacuees currently in isolation at the Texas Center for Infectious Disease here in San Antonio. Tonight, eight people remain at TCID here at home. And concerns have led to changes on several college and university campuses. UTSA, Alamo Colleges, Texas A&M University San Antonio, Our Lady of the Lake University, UIW and Trinity University extending their spring breaks before transitioning then to online classes. The online classes are expected to start on March 23rd, but how long that lasts is different for each school. Along with those changes, Trinity University is asking students to check out of their on-campus housing unless they receive an exemption from university officials. And athletics for the remainder of the spring semester have been canceled. Meanwhile, St. Mary's University says it will resume classes on campus on March 23rd. We asked a disease specialist who has previously worked for the World Health Organization and the CDC about colleges moving to online classes. Well, I think it's, it's a response to fear and it's a response to government officials can't do nothing when the public is concerned you have to do something so that's something they can do and a reminder there are currently no community spread cases here in san antonio dr murray cohen also spoke to us about keeping yourself healthy to help others stay safe angela michelle lives with a compromised immune system here in san antonio and is considered at high risk for complications from the coronavirus should she be exposed she tells the 19th's Patty Santos she's asking healthy people to protect themselves in order to protect people like her. Make sure the seal is good. This is how Angela Michelle goes out into public, the rare time she ventures out since the coronavirus emerged. I have antiphospholipid syndrome. It's an autoimmune blood clotting disorder. Caused me to have a stroke. Also caused me to have um, develop a rare form of pulmonary hypertension. Her condition affects her lungs and she's at high risk for any kind of respiratory illness. COVID-19 is a real threat. For someone like me to get this virus, it could be devastating. The CDC says people with serious chronic medical conditions like lung disease need to take extra precautions. Infectious disease epidemiologist Dr. Murray Cohen says even mild cases of COVID-19 can turn serious and possibly lead to pneumonia. The only defense you have if you get infected is your immune system fighting that virus. And one of you is going to win and one of you is going to lose. He says everyone needs to assess and manage their own individual risk. Those who have compromised immune systems have to just be extra, extra vigilant. We're scared our medical facilities are going to get overwhelmed and we won't even be able to get the regular treatment that we need. Michelle says she hopes people in the community will take precautions and be mindful of their actions to prevent a community spread. And a medical uh, procedure she had scheduled in California was postponed until May, and she doesn't even know if she'll be able to fly because of the risk of exposure at the airport. Now, online, she connects with other people from around the world that have a similar disability, and they say they all are sharing the same concerns and hunkering down until this blows over. Thank you, Patty. Here are some facts to remember about COVID-19. The World Health Organization says the flu can spread faster than COVID-19. Initial data indicates that children are less affected than adults. Again, older adults and those with underlying conditions have an increased risk for severe infection. 80% of infections are mild or asymptomatic. 15% are severe requiring oxygen. And 5% are critical requiring a ventilator. The city and several organizations are working on a plan to help protect the homeless here in San Antonio from coronavirus. Celeste Egert, vice president and chief development officer at Haven for Hope, says they have masks, paper towels, extra garbage bags and Lysol on hand. They're also encouraging social distancing and placing signs around the facility, reminding people to wash their hands with soap and water 
for at least 20 seconds. If someone is feeling sick, they'll be escorted to Haven's on-site clinic, Centro Med. If they deem that somebody needs to have further testing for coronavirus, they will work with Metro Health to get that additional testing done. The CDC developed recommendations for homeless service providers about how to protect their staff, their clients and guests. We have all of that information on our website right now. And KSAT.com is filled with news, resources and updates by the minute on COVID-19. We've dedicated a tab there at the top of our page to all things coronavirus. Just click on that tab and it will take you to everything you need to know, including canceled events, changes at universities, restrictions on travel and cases across Texas. That's on KSAT.com. Still ahead on the night beat, dreams dash for customers hoping to plan their dream event. One customer says the money was paid and the date was set. Now she's forced to find another venue. But the business is telling KSAT coming up. And an operation to take down part of a team behind a cartel boss. The details behind Project Python and the multi-million dollar reward being offered in the case next on the night beat. Coming up on Monday night, convicted of killing two babies and suspected of murdering dozens more. KSAT News at 9 uncovers the story behind one of the most shocking suspected serial killers in Texas history, Janine Jones. Hear from the families, the prosecutors, and the experts who know too well the decades-long story of the killer nurse. It's all happening Monday on KSAT News at 9, any way that you stream. It's called Project Python, and today the operation was executed to take down part of a powerful drug trafficking cartel. More than 250 people were arrested in the push to target the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, but the cartel boss is still on the run. The Drug Enforcement Agency now offering a $10 million reward for information that could help with that arrest. The cartel's alleged boss is known as El Mencho. During today's raids, in several states, about 1,300 pounds of drugs were seized, along with more than $1.7 million in cash and assets. New on the night beat after finding their dream venue, customers of Urban Events Center are now forced to find a new location for their special day. The business was evicted from its location on the city's northwest side, leaving 30 customers in limbo. The night team Stephen Cavazos sets out to get some answers. May 2nd was set to be the perfect day for Annalisa Gonzalez. Gonzalez was preparing to celebrate her quinceanera at what she and her family considered was the perfect venue. We saw Urban Event Center. She was all smiles and happy, you know. But this eviction notice was posted in February, notifying Urban Event Center located off Callahan near Bandera Road that it was being kicked out. Annalisa's mother got the bad news from a vendor, saying the venue had closed. The family left scrambling to make last minute changes. I had to call our vendors, our cake and everybody to change the date so it can come sooner. It has been a lot. Owner and operator Patricia Lujan Gonzalez says a total of 30 customers booked their events at the venue for the remainder of the year. Lujan Gonzalez says she understands why there's frustration, but she says she doesn't believe they did anything wrong. But the property owner says they hadn't made payments for six months. Once the event center filed for bankruptcy, the property owner was forced to evict them. Lujan Gonzalez says they couldn't make payments due to a slow period in business. Every year our rent would go up and basically we were just trying to keep up with the, the rent. She says her attorney recommended they file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which would allow them to reorganize its finances and come up with a plan to continue operating. Bankruptcy court filings show that Urban Event Center hasn't presented any of the documents needed to move forward with the Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing and is now in jeopardy of being forced to shut down permanently. Despite these financial problems, Lujan Gonzalez says they're not out of business and are still accepting clients and providing event planning services. We're just kind of mobile and trying to find a location that we can kind of start operating from. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Alasoya has now found a new location for her daughter's birthday. Lujan Gonzalez says she plans to issue them a full refund at the end of the month. She also says she has partially issued refunds to four other customers. Taking a live look outside with live cam. A gorgeous night out there after a beautiful sunny day, the first of sunny days for spring break so far. Oh man, it was so nice yeah. out there. Even in the evening, I went for a little walk in the evening and the humidity was low enough to where it felt pretty good outside. <laughs> so it was a beautiful day. We were able to see high temperatures in the mid to upper 80s.
But everybody's kind of talking about how it's about to be oak season. In fact, our Adam Kasky, uh, who I'm filling in for today, has sent me this picture in uh, outside of his house. And this is an oak tree. And you can see those uh, catkins right there, which are those uh, hanging little pods of pollen that push off these old oak leaves. And these pods of pollen get picked up by the wind. And that's why we end up having quite a bit of uh, oak problems right around this time of year. Again, those are called catkins and oak season peaks in late March and early April. That's when those catkins really become a little bit more mature. And so you can see today's pollen count, which was high for the oak at 640 is right there we're about to really start to ramp up and I mentioned this because of course uh, COVID-19 is a really big thing here across the nation across the world but here in San Antonio a lot of people will start to experience allergy symptoms from the oak just uh, just wanted to put that on your radar and if you don't have a fever it's likely an allergy from the oak. Take a look at the time lapse today as we saw the sunset. Very little clouds in the sky. The high temperature was 85 degrees. That is 13 degrees above average. The morning low was about 15 degrees above average as well. And it was even warmer down near Catula and Laredo. We were seeing high temperatures in the low 90s. 91 up in Del Rio, 93 in Catula, 92 in Laredo. Now things have cooled down pretty nicely for us. It's comfortable out there. 77 degrees at the airport, 77 in Rock Springs and 80 still in the 80s down in Catula and Laredo. Now we're seeing high humidity working its way in from the southeast uh, of the Gulf of Mexico. And so because of that, we're going to really start to see some morning fog once again tomorrow morning, a lot like this morning, 65 tomorrow morning as you wake up temperatures close to the dew points and then we'll be able to see a little sunshine today. We saw an abundance of sunshine tomorrow. It'll be difficult for us to shake that cloud cover. I will be looking at a high temperature near 82 degrees in the afternoon with a south breeze at five to 10 miles per hour. So it's going to be a nice, pleasant day for your Thursday. We've got all of that Gulf of Mexico moisture moving in. We really could turn this into rain if we had good upper level support. Unfortunately, we just don't have that good upper level support just yet. But this low pressure system is going to move over slowly, bringing with it even more Pacific moisture. And so because of that, I do think that we'll have a chance for isolated showers and storms on the weekend and early into next week. That's our best chance for storms. It's not that great, but the potential is there. So let's go ahead and take you through the planning forecast. Just know that tomorrow is going to be a pretty nice day after morning fog, a little bit of sunshine in the afternoon. Every day close to 80 degrees and every day a chance for isolated rain after tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. At six, we were talking about the possibility of playing NBA games without fans <laughs> and then boom, a bombshell. Yeah, and Rudy Gorbert, I guess he didn't think he was as sick as he was, but on Monday, you saw the video of him touching all the microphones. Now today, the positive COVID-19 test comes out. The Spurs have been told, as well as the rest of the NBA, they can practice with the Spurs not taking any chances. They've called off their practice set for tomorrow. That means no game on Friday against Denver. We'll update you on the breaking news coming out of the NBA and also March Madness. Bands fans coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs, as well as the rest of the NBA, put their season on hold after a member of the Utah Jazz tested positive for the coronavirus tonight. Prior to this development, that brought tonight's scheduled NBA game between the Utah Jazz, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and Oklahoma City to a grinding halt before it even started. The NBA Board of Governors had a consensus of opinion going forward to play their games without fans. That all changed tonight when word came down that Jazz All Star Rudy Gorbert tested positive today for COVID 19 while still back in Salt Lake City. Golden State Warriors had already decided to play their games without without fans starting tomorrow night against the Nets. But now all operations are suspended while the NBA decides what to do from this point on. Players for both the Utah Jazz and Oklahoma City Thunder are now being quarantined inside their own locker rooms in Oklahoma City. And now word has come down that an official who worked Gorbera's last game was scheduled to officiate tonight's game between the Pelicans and the Kings in Sacramento. Now that game has been called off. Reaction coming in late tonight. It's unprecedented. Uh, I think it's a prudent thing to do, and what went on in Utah, I don't know all the information, but that just shows you how fragile everything is right now, so it's the prudent thing to do. It's a sensitive issue, obviously. Uh, it must be a very serious situation for the league to make the decision that they have made. 
Earlier today, stunning announcement that one of America's most popular sports, March Madness, will be played without fans due to the coronavirus. The president of the NCAA, Dr. Mark Emmert, made the decision to play all tournaments games with only limited essential personnel, family members, and media. That's after the governor of Ohio, Mike DeWine, announced that he would ban all fans at regional games in Cleveland and Dayton. Now the NCAA is looking into moving games to smaller venues, beginning first with the Final Four in Atlanta, which was scheduled for the huge Mercedes-Benz Stadium. While the games will still be televised, it still will be without fans. Here is part of Emmert's statement released by the NCAA today, and it reads this way. It says, while I understand how disappointing this is for all our fans of our sports, my decision is based on the current understanding of how COVID-19 is progressing in the United States. The this, this decision is in the best interest of public health, including that of coaches, administrators, fans, and most importantly, our student athletes. While the Spurs wait to see if they will play again this season, they're still focused on trying to make the playoffs and save their 22 season streak if and when they resume playing games. It's an uphill battle at this point, though. There are just 19 games left, of which 11 will be at home, leaving eight on the road in order to finish 500 and have a shot at the eighth and final playoff spot in the Western Conference. The Spurs must win 14 of their last 19 while losing only five. After missing the last six games with a sore shoulder, LaBarca Soldiers return to lead the Spurs to 24 in a critical 119-109 victory over the Mavs to give them at least a fighting chance. Your season's dwindling down um, if we want to keep, keep playing we got to play with that sense of desperation um, compete every night and um, get on a run here Spurs have now called off their practice tomorrow and this game against Denver scheduled for Friday has now been postponed while this is that turns out is the last game of the regular season in the NBA for the foreseeable future this is the Dallas Mavericks hosting the Denver Nuggets tonight in the starting lineup tonight the former Mavs uh, Mavs former Spur fan favorite Boban Marjanovic third quarter Luka Doncic going strong to the rim for the bucket and the foul he finished the night with 28 points Mavs are up nine but it was Boban who was the star tonight 60 percent for the field a career high 31 points 17 boards. Dallas gets a win, 113-97. The Texans parting ways with a veteran defensive back next. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Houston, Texas have mutually agreed with Jonathan Joseph to let the veteran cornerback test the free agent market. Joseph is now 35 years old and spent the last nine seasons with the Texans during 14 games last season. Had 51 tackles, 13 pass breakups, one interception. But overall, he's the Texans franchise leader in interceptions with 17. Here's part of the statement released by the Texans today, and it says... In part, the entire Houston, Texas organization thanks Jonathan for the contributions he made to our team and the Houston community. We wish him and his family all the best as he pursues free agency. San Antonio is hosting some of the best divers in the world this week for the spring roundup clinic and invitational, including a pair of Olympians, 2010 meter platform Olympic gold medalist Laura Wilkinson and 2016 Olympic qualifier Cassidy Cook. After coaches from the Team USA helped instruct divers from San Antonio and around the state, the two accomplished divers had a chance to offer their own words of advice. Fear is big in my sport, but I mean, it's it's in life. It's in everything we do. We, we come to this point where we have to make a decision. Am I going to let fear dictate where I go and stop me and paralyze me in my tracks, or am I going to push past it and overcome it? And overcoming fear is maybe the greatest feeling you can have in the world, so I highly recommend facing it and just moving forward. We've been through a lot as uh, divers, young and old, and to be able to share our experiences with the up-and-comers can be really beneficial to them, um, kind of use us as mentors and, and help pave the way for them. And now wondering if the Olympics are going to even happen this year after the clinic wraps up, wrapped up today. Divers compete at the Northside Swim Center for Thursday through Sunday. As of right now, it's still scheduled to go on. Things could change. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Very, fast. By the hour. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. I want to get you out to some late breaking news, a shooting in far West Bear County. This is a live picture from the scene near Sangria in Cartagena. This is in the Alamo Ranch area near Lone Star Parkway. We do have a crew there trying to gather more information, but we are still waiting from any official word on what happened from the Bear County Sheriff's Office. So again, a shooting reported in this area near Alamo Ranch Parkway, but we are waiting on word a confirmation of details. We'll be sure to update this story online at KSAT.com as well as GMSA in the morning. That does it for the night, Pete. Don't forget, Good Morning San Antonio starts tomorrow at 4.30. Have a good night.